Hi everybody and welcome to Alistair Davis Golf. Today I want to share with you a little bit of a case study of one of my students that recently came in for a lesson. So I'll share with you some of his video and his Troutman data, but why I thought this would be an interesting case to look at with you guys would be is how I'm going to try and get him to do something that may be considered not normal or certainly against the kind of fundamentals that people would want to do. So Ian is a good player, he plays off kind of scratch, he's turned pro now, but he's a scratch golfer before he turned pro. Uh, he's had a reasonable good season, but this is the start of his winter kind of program, so he's come on in for a bit of a review. So what we went through really, we looked at his ball flight, we had a chat about his season, had a look at his stats and his performance and shots to hole. We then had a look at his trackman data and his video of his golf swing. Not that I use one exclusively, uh, I tend to use ball flight, motion and video and trackman as a bit of a kind of combination of everything I'd look at. And one of the interesting things when we looked at his kind of trackman data was that he was hitting down on the golf ball kind of 7 degrees, you know, uh, 6.8 degrees, which is quite a lot really with a 6 iron. So everything else was reasonably okay if we look at his data. Uh, swing plane, vertical swing plane was a little bit high at 63 degrees, but the rest of his data was pretty good. So we'll show his golf swing, it'll pop up on the screen here as well, and you can have a look at it. And one of the key things that I, I kind of spotted within his golf swing was kind of how little he rotated to the right in his backswing. And I don't want, you know, excessive movement to the right, but I certainly would want him to turn his kind of mid-spine, you know, and get his mid-spine to get over a little bit in the backswing without kind of losing his head shape. So I'd want the head to move a maximum kind of one to two inches with the six iron. Happy if it stays where it is and he rotates nicely. But in Ian's case, he didn't kind of rotate very well. Now he has got a slight tight mid-spine, we know that from his physio stuff, but uh, this, the conclusion I came to, or the solution I came to, was trying to get him to feel that his right hip work back more in his backswing like this. So more hip depth in his backswing. And allowing his right leg to straighten, which is kind of where I'm coming from saying is probably against the norm. So his right leg straightening his backswing, allowing his hip depth to be increased to allow his thoracic spine to turn more. And in turn, what that kind of gave him was the ability then to be able to hit the golf ball fractionally more from the inside but also to shallow out his angle of attack because his sternum then and the downswing wasn't kind of getting so far ahead of the golf ball and his head wasn't getting ahead of it in the start of the downswing in transition so from there he was very kind of on top of the ball creating that steep angle of attack and the ball flight certainly at the start of the lesson was kind of these shots that started fairly straight and then just kind of drifted off to the right a little bit so what we saw as a result of that really was in Trapman, his speed slightly increased only by 0.3 of a mile an hour, which is nothing really to write home about. But his path went slightly more into out to 0.8 into out rather than minus 0.2. So both are very good. Not really fussed about either one of those two. Um, the other thing that changed is vertical swing plane came down by two degrees, down to 61.3, which is much more to a, a nice number for me. Not that I teach by numbers, but it's, again, I use it as kind of evidence. You know, kind of a lot of my philosophy is about measuring things, using evidence, creating changes and kind of reusing evidence again, whether that be ball flight, whether that be trackman data, whether that be dispersion charts, whether that be stats. You know, I like to see these things make a difference. I like to see the kind of where they are and where they're going and make a decision based, based on evidence, not kind of emotional or opinions, using my kind of factual stuff to add to all that. So that was the main thing that kind of changed. Um, and in terms of the ball flight, the ball flight straightened up a bit, which is kind of what we wanted to see. So we would want Ian to create more flexibility in his mid-spine. And as he does that, his right knee can probably stay more flexed. But I'm certainly not worried about his right leg trying to straighten a little bit in order to give him a more balanced motion in his golf swing to allow him to deliver the golf club more efficiently to the ball in a consistent manner to help his golf. And so the, the kind of moral of this video really is don't be scared to kind of let your right leg straighten if you struggle to rotate correctly behind the golf ball and struggle to get the hip depth we would want to make the correct golf swing. Don't think, oh, lots of people say about keeping this right knee kind of fixed and flexed. And that's the key. If you can't rotate, that's just going to make you have a, a kind of a short backswing, an underturned backswing, which means you're going to come over the top generally on the golf ball and hit down on the ball a long way potentially and you know struggle to control that impact zone so have a look at this video see what you think see what you think of what we do with young ian you know hopefully we might post some more on ian you can see his progress through this winter if he sticks to his guns and gets working hard there are more things to work on in his golf swing this is the first priority for me i saw and i wanted to share this with you because i thought the right knee story was quite a nice one to help you know look at 
how we work with people, how we work around their characteristics rather than saying this is the only way to play golf. Definitely more way to do things in life. So if you enjoyed the video, please click like. Please post any comments you have in the video down below, especially if any videos you want me to cover in the future. And also make sure if you haven't subscribed already, you please do so. I've got regular content coming every single week.